some of you may recall the Tenants from Hell case. It's one of the more popular videos on my channel, and it kind of blew all of our minds. There has to be a minimum covenant of habitability. Did the city inspect this property? When was it last inspected? Uh, I think it was like a year ago, and, and it looked good then. It did. When we went in, we thought well, it, it looks looked good. I'm ashamed of looking at these pictures. Uh, they're, in fact, all the toilets are just... I can't even stand a look at them. Uh, why someone would leave a house like that? And there is a full dumpster and there's junk everywhere inside and out. And so uh, we've got to determine that. I don't see how it was wrecked up because I had been going through. There was not there was already holes in the wall that we've been that we had a repaired a whole bunch. I, I've been painting it. We've been fixing the cupboards. There was a few kitchen cupboards that was broken that we hadn't fixed. The whole bathroom upstairs never worked. Every time the bathtub or the shower or whatever was turned on, it flooded in my bedroom downstairs. Well, now I have for you the Kansas version of the Tenants from Hell, and I promise you, this one's worse. And if you're eating, I suggest you wait to watch it. Just, just FYI. Darren, could you identify yourself, please? Darren Schwent. Okay. <clears throat> and Darren, are you appearing for Elizabeth? I am the trustee of that estate and I am the manager of the rental house. Okay. Um, one thing before we begin uh, more formally, um, it appears that the claims concerning uh, Miss uh, Vance are identical to the claims uh, concerning Mr. Uh, Muckleroy. And I am uncertain as to whether your prayer is for $9,575 total and you're seeking, if the court were to find in your favor, a joint and several judgment against both Ms. Vance and Mr. McElroy, uh, or whether you're alleging that your total damages are uh, over $19,000. Could you please clarify that for me? Total damages were $19,000. So they were not a married couple. They were separate entities. So I went after them for each for half. Well, from the court's perspective, given that the fact patterns are uh, described, I think, identically, um it is uh the court's concern that uh miss vance who does not appear today <clears throat> may have been operating under the misapprehension that the uh nine thousand five hundred seventy five dollar uh prayer were the total damages in the case I suppose um, there also might be some uh, question at some later point uh, regarding uh, the uh, separability of the uh, parties in the case. But I think in a big picture circumstance, I, uh, I sure want to make sure that um, there's uh, an understanding on the part of both defendants uh, what exactly is being sought. And um, I want to make sure that there's no confusion given the similarity or perhaps even identical nature of the fact pattern that is used to undergird the claim. Um, Mr. Uh, McElroy, do you um, anticipate Miss Vance to come in or is she present with you? No, we haven't been together in months. I haven't seen her, talked to her. 
<clears throat> don't know. Don't care. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I moved out of the house. I took my name off everything. Shut everything off and left. Okay. Well, um, if you're prepared, Mr. Mr. McElroy, to go forward today, at least on your portion of this matter, uh, I'm prepared to do that. Are you prepared to do so, sir? Sure. All right. And uh, Mr. Schwent, are you likewise prepared to go forward, uh, at least as far as Mr. Ruck McElroy's uh, portion of this is concerned? Yes. All right. <clears throat> We are on the record then in Elizabeth Schwent uh, through the power, power of attorney of uh, Darren Schwent as her attorney uh, on this case uh, versus Grover Muckleroy. The case number is Butler County 24 SC 037. Uh, Mr. Schwent appears uh, in person and pro se. Mr. Uh, McElroy also appears in person and pro se. Uh, we are here on the small claims petition of the plaintiff seeking damages in the amount of $9,575, and that if there is a damage award, that it should also uh, be prospectively inclusive of interest costs uh, and the uh, uh, cost of the action in the case. Um, Mr. Schwent, if you would please like to explain your uh, position on this case and if there's anything i've forgotten in uh, explaining your prayer if you could please uh explain that further as well okay um <clears throat> mr mcleroy and miss vance moved into the rental house and i have before pictures of before they moved in and they when they moved out um the place had been just virtually walked out except there was trash everywhere i do have videos of after they moved out every exterior door was broken into and the carpet was ruined the subfloor was ruined uh, the washer and dryer were mm -hmm. removed although that was part of renting the house and i have before pictures of that and so we had to remodel the house to get it to live in, and that's the damage that I'm seeking. All right, and the damages that you're seeking, are you saying that they just bring the house back to the level it was at the time it was originally leased to Mr. Mokoroy and Miss Vance? Yes. And I do have a petitioner's or plaintiff's packet. I mean, it has uh, basically the lease document and the uh, power of attorney. Do you um, have those photographs you said that uh, showed kind of the before and after in uh, form and fashion where you can display them today? Yes, I. they told me I could do a share screen. So okay. I'm new to all this, but I can try and do that. All right. If you could do that, just so Mr. McElroy will be able to see what your uh, concerns were with respect to the photographic evidence. Okay. Are you able to see this? I am. I, I can, sir. Yes. <clears throat> and these images are appearing a little bit uh, smaller on my monitor, so I will be using a magnifying glass. I hope that's not too distracting. I want to make sure I see <laughs> the detail. I've, I've got it enlarged as best I can. Yes, yes. And I, I think you've done all you can do. I just want to make sure I see the detail. So that's the outside of the house. Um I was thinking I could flip through there, but it doesn't look like <clears throat> I just I want to show that that 511 that is the house. <clears throat> okay. 
This is the master bedroom. And is this before? This is the... before. Okay. So this is before the lease was entered into. Yes. Okay. And I can, you know, like right here, it tells you the date. Okay. So that's definitely the before. This is the other bedroom. Okay. This is the third bedroom. All right. Bathroom. Okay. Living room. All right. Kitchen. Okay. Another view of the kitchen with the washer and dryer. All right. And the garage. Okay. I have a five and a half minute video of virtually the house before anything was done. And I can fast forward some of it if you want or whatever. It's it's a rather long video, but that's, I just tried to show everything. Well, if you'd like to present it in the way that you think is best, that would be fine with the court. I'm going to step away while y'all watch this video. I can't look at it. This is outside and it's not that important. Okay. <clears throat> so there you can see that the front door had been broke into. And we had just replaced that door. This is a second bedroom. Okay. This is the master bedroom.
kitchen. It's where the washer and dryer is supposed to be. They were missing, stolen. The water there was not turned off when they uh, took the washing machine, and so that's why we had to replace the subfloor. We'll have show to show photos of that later. Okay. The electricity had been turned off, and so everything in the refrigerator had gone bad. And that's you're just showing that's maggots and everything from the refrigerator just being left unplugged but yet full that door is kind of functioning but it's been broke into because the hinges are all wrong this is the garage and there's no door jam on that side and there's another exterior door that's been broke into And that refrigerator was also had need to be cleaned up. That was their personal refrigerator, but it was full of food and whatever. And then the electricity turn, turned off, was a mess. I secured all this two by fours on the garage door. I secured to keep it so it would be secure. Here's a two and a half minute video of the reason why, um, uh, because of the subfloor, like all these little brown spots, the subfloor is raised up. So water had been spilled and just left. And you could tell it with the carpet. And then this is damage from the washing machine being the um, water being just slowly left to trickle and all this damage is from, from the washing machine here and into the kitchen. Can't see it too much, but that that subfloor is raised up there. <clears throat> I could probably end that. Um, and then this is a picture of that. Here's the washer and the dryer. Let me blow that up. And that's, this was all wet from that washing machine. And that's why we had to replace all this subfloor and then new flooring. Okay. And um, I don't see any uh, receipts included in the packet here. Can you tell me a little bit about the nature of the repairs? Okay. I do construction work for a living. So I did the work myself and purchased uh, the material at the local lumber yard for the subfloor, got that all cleaned up, um, put the new subfloor down. Uh, we purchased carpet at uh, Jabara's Carpet in Wichita and had somebody come in and lay the carpet for us in the bedroom and the living room. And then the new flooring in the kitchen, I laid myself. Okay, and is the damage that you're or the damages you're requesting reflective exclusively for the purchase prices for the replacement subflooring flooring and carpeting or are they inclusive of any uh normal uh, rate that you would charge in your business in construction Tried to keep track of my labor and tried to keep track of the just the materials for the repair itself. Of course, we repainted everything because the walls were very dirty. 
So we had to clean the walls and then paint the walls. Um, the new subfloor, the just the flooring. And of course, um, the washer and the dryer we had to replace because they are they were stolen. And then that refrigerator was just so nasty and there were parts broken off on the inside as well that we purchased a new refrigerator. So that's kind of those totals came to be about that price. That's, that's how I came up with that. Okay. And help me to understand one other thing. I, I think you initially indicated that the refrigerator belonged to Miss Vance and Mr. McElroy, but you replaced the refrigerator. Did I, did I understand that correctly? There were two refrigerators. One's in the kitchen. One was in the garage. The one in the garage was their refrigerator. The one in the kitchen was my refrigerator. Okay. So you just replaced the one refrigerator in the kitchen. Yeah. Okay. And how did the costs break down in terms of labor versus materials? Um, the materials came to $8,901.84. I had my labor, which was 167 and a half hours at $40 an hour. And then I had other people come in and help uh, do this, that painting, uh, putting the subfloor down and stuff. That was two hundred and eighteen dollars and fifty fifty hours at twenty dollars an hour. Okay. All right, and um, uh, forgive me. I had, uh, as we had a little bit of an uncertain start with me trying to understand the pleadings and this and the companion case. I had neglected to do this, but I'll ask you uh, now. Uh, Mr. Schwent, do you uh, solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony that you have given has been the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. Yes, I affirm. All right. Um, Mr. Schwent, if you don't have anything further, I'll give Mr. McElroy an ap opportunity to respond. Uh, Mr. McElroy, do you have anything you'd like to say with respect to the allegations that have been made today? Yes, sir. I actually do. So I moved out of the house. They were supposed to go get the rest of her and her kids and stuff. The house got broken into in the middle of moving. I made her police report and he knew about the doors being broke. I had a police officers come in. They checked the home. They took pictures. They gave him the case numbers. Uh, washer and dryer. I had no clue about being gone. I haven't been there. I didn't go back to the home. That's how my son passed away. And, um, so I had no clue about that. But the subfloor and the kid in the living room where it started to bubble, where he had pictures up, that was from the dishwasher that was installed. I said something about it, but can't really go back that far. It's been months. Um, but to it, he knew about the damages, the stuff left in there. I didn't know it was still there. It was supposed to be picked up, gone. So... I just don't understand how I'm supposed to be paying nine thousand dollars for something when I paid deposit in case something like that happened. I okay. thought that was for the deposit of the home. So if something happened damage wise, that was to be taken care of. I've been in that house for us in the house for two and a half years. Two years, probably like three months exactly. Okay. And you're saying that there was a gap between when you left and when Miss Vance left? Um, no, she was gone before me, but they were supposed to go pick up all the stuff, and I don't know about the rest. All oh, I know is I walked in, so, doors so were kicked did, in. When you say they were supposed to go back, that was Miss Vance you're talking about? Yeah, there was like, I had guns stolen out of there. I had TVs, I had all kinds of stuff stolen. That doesn't matter prior to this, but. Point is, I had a police report made and gave to Mr. Swint. Okay. And you were already out of the house when the police report was made? Yeah. I went back to go get the rest of my stuff, and somebody kicked in the garage door, living room door. So after I had everything fixed, my renters and insurance covered the first time to be fixed. The second time, I had a police report made. And then he got it. 
So everything else, I have no clue about. The washer and dryer, no clue about. Okay. Do you know the water's still on? Because I turned the water off, electric off, mm -hmm. gas off, everything in my name off. Do, um, I'm trying to understand, were the washer and dryer still there when the police report was made? Yeah, they were still there. Okay. This was after, or no, they were gone as well. I'm sorry. That was all part of everything. Everything okay. stolen in the house was on a police report. Okay. And that the, that was after you had already moved out, though, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. I was in the middle of moving out when it all got broke into. Okay. Uh, Mr. Schwent, do you have anything? Uh, and I guess I, sh I should... Uh, also do as I had done with Mr. Schwent, Mr. McElroy, do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you have given is indeed uh, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, Mr. Schwent, anything further from you, sir? Um, mm. Mr. McElroy is correct in the deposit. I do have $910 of his money from deposit that I did forget about, so we could deduct that amount from uh, that because I did keep the deposit and okay. that is what the deposit is for but there when it exceeds especially this much the deposit cannot cover all of that that's why I'm going to a small claims court okay and part of that what he said too we gave him until the end of May to be able to move all of his belongings out of the house and that's when we came in was June 1st, that whatever that Monday was of June 1st. And that's, this is what that video I had was of that June 1st. Okay. Um, when was the date of the police report? Do either of you know? I do not. Uh, I'm believing around like May 23rd to 26th. Okay. All right. Well, I don't know the cop's name, but he was very nice. Okay. Well, I think um, I'm going to do a, a couple of things. I just need a little bit of time to think about all the evidence and also uh, the submitted documentation. I want to go over that uh, a little bit more carefully than I can reasonably undertake today. And so I would like to uh, reconvene this hearing just for purposes of issuing a decision uh, next Monday, which I believe is the 30th of September at yeah. 1 30. Uh, yeah. Yes. We have at 1 30 an in person next Monday. I'm sorry? We have a limited in person hearing next Monday at 1 30. Oh, okay. I might have to do it two weeks then to uh, what would that be? The uh, 7th of October? Yes. Okay. Um, um, I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, I'm supposed to have surgery on my hand that day, that morning. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, in as much as um, this isn't a eviction question or one that's uh, pressing quite as much as others might be, I'll go ahead and set this over to the 14th of October. I, I think it's very important that you get your uh, surgery taken care of timely. Your Honor. And, yes. I'm so sorry. I, the 14th, I believe, is a holiday. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm trying my best, but <laughs> keep. Yes, going. that's Columbus Day. Striking out. Okay. <laughs> um, well, um, I hate to go basically a month down the road, but I think October 21 is probably our next best bet. And I would also like, if you would please, um, and I'll, I'll actually, we'll, we'll set this over to the October 21 at 1.30 date for uh, purposes of issuing a decision. The other thing, I see some uh, notes in this file which give me reasonable uncertainty as to whether Ms. Vance uh, would have been available to be here today. Um, I do think that um, she was served and I'm um, inclined to uh, you know, consider moving forward with that case as well. But I think in as much as there's uh, at least a potential that she is 
through no fault of her own, unable to be with us here today, I'm going to ask if you would please, Ms. Boleyn, to send notice to uh, Ms. Vance also uh, for uh, hearing on the uh, 21st of October at 1.30. And if uh, she does indeed appear at that time, we could potentially take up the matter uh, via hearing. If she does not appear and Mr. Schwint wishes to move the court for a potential order of default judgment, I'll be happy to hear that at that time. Would well, do you mind and her separately? I don't want to be in the same area. Well, you would just be coming in by Zoom. So. I know. I don't even want to do that. Sorry. Um. I mean, I'm trying to be as accommodating as I know. I can I'm, I'm sorry. I, I can just... I can take up your case first that day, and um, we can. Uh, I mean, she she wouldn't necessarily be speaking or anything. I don't know if she'll be even let into the meeting at that time. But we'll take up your case first, and then I do want to keep them on the same date, though, just for judicial economy and for also the benefit of Mr. Schwint, who's already having to uh, make two appearances when he thought he might be able to wrap these things up with one. So we'll do that then. October 21 at one thirty. All right. Thank you, sir. Have a good one. You too. Thank you, Mr. Schwint. Yes, thank you.